Hi, we are Tina and Bernie and our Border Terrier Blue and not forgetting our converted Bilingo Buddy. We are the other Windsor. Well, we now have to pick these uh, weekends away. I think it's going to be another cold one. There's beautiful snow up on top of Helvellyn. The journey was to be a weird one. Sunshine one minute and then snowstorms the next. And then when we arrived in Harrogate, we got back to the sunshine again. How weird was that? All those seasons in one day. Not even a day actually, just a few hours. campsite this is a certified site members only camping and no I beg your pardon the caravan and motor home club um, the two doors there one on the right goes to the farmhouse and the one on the left is actually a small toilet and a sink that we can actually use it's a nice open field well kept you've got water and a chemical disposal point just here And it really is a, a lovely quiet site. They never take more than six. There's your chemical uh, waste point. And uh, swing round, fresh water. There's lovely views here as well. Right across the, the dales over to Ripley. There's a few nice walks you can do. You can walk down into the village over the fields and down into Hamsway, which is uh, over in that direction. Or you can walk down the fields and across that way behind the sheds there over to Ripley and Ripley Castle, where there's also some lovely walks. You can go around the gardens, there's uh, a deer park there, around the castle. There's lovely ice cream in the village. It really is a nice spot to come to and as I say, it's quiet. And the rate this year for 2022 is £18 per night. One thing I will say, it is a working dairy farm. So uh, don't be surprised if you hear them getting up to do the milking early in the morning. Although, to be honest, we've not heard it this time very much at all. And here comes that weather again. Not that we're bothered because we're tucked up nice and warm with a cuppa. I'm not saying it wouldn't be nice to not have rain. All our time out so far in Buddy has been in goddamn awful weather. Bring on the sun. This is the village of Ripley, part of the Ripley Castle estate. It was totally rebuilt in the mid 1800s after being demolished by a previous Ingleby ancestor and stands by the medieval 14th century castle. In the graveyard at All Saints Church stands the medieval weeping cross. Its origins are not known, but it's thought to have been used by pilgrims and penitents. That's what all those indents are all around the base. They're knee holes. There is no other such cross believed to exist anywhere else in England.
Hey Blue, just look at that tail wag. Grade 1 listed Ripley Castle has an interesting history. It was acquired by Sir Thomas Ingleby as a marriage dowry around 1308 and is still inhabited today by the sixth baronet and his wife Lady Emma Ingleby. Sir Thomas's oldest son received a knighthood from King Edward III for saving him from being gored by a wild boar and the boar's head is now the family crest. And there's more. In 1605, Sir William Ingleby was involved in the gunpowder plot. He allowed the plotters to stay in the house while they procured some horses. One of the conspirators was his nephew, Robert Winter, and although Sir Thomas was arrested and charged with treason, he was in the end acquitted. Not sure why. And the history continues. Sir William went on to fight for the king in the English Civil War, and at the Battle of Marston Moor in 1644, the Royalists lost the battle and Sir William made his escape back to Ripley Castle, where he spent the night in what must have been an extremely long and scary night hiding in a priest hole, whilst Oliver Cromwell had billeted himself there for the night. Made of stern stuff, this William Ingleby. Yeah, what, what's that? Mm. So we set off to have a look around the grounds. There was a cafe opposite selling what looked like lovely scones and cakes, but we resisted. There are the usual gift and craft shops here, but we weren't expecting to see this. <laughs> a gin school. Can anyone tell us exactly what you do in a gin school, apart from drink it, or maybe it's about blending? Botanicals are very popular, I believe. I like a bit of ginger and rhubarb gin myself, although I think Bernie's favourite spirit is more a drop of rum. Leaving the castle, we decided Blue could do with a walk, so we set off on part of the local path and cycleway. It skirts the castle grounds.
off from Skipton having collected uh, some pies from our favourite little butchers and uh, things didn't quite go according to plan. There was an orange triangular warning light on the dash and uh, a message on the radio system saying engine repair needed. I thought well we've had lights before and there may be just a little bit of a faulty, faulty sensor so we set off. Um, wasn't long though before we soon realised things weren't quite right. I'd said to Bernie, I haven't driven for a while, um, I'll drive home. Well, <laughs> just my luck wasn't it? We set off down the road, the light was still on, it wasn't going to go away and I thought, it just doesn't feel right, there's, there's no pull. It was weird, it was the weirdest feeling, it was like the, um, the turbo wasn't kicking in. So we thought, well, we'll carry on a bit. Maybe it'll sort its head out. Maybe it's got a bit of a, a fuel line blockage or maybe the air filter's a bit clogged. Maybe it's the DPF. Uh, we'll run it for a, a little while and see how it goes. But it didn't clear. I pulled off the road a few miles down, sat for a while, turned the ignition off and thought, well, let's see if it comes back on. It did. I thought, well, we've got this far. Maybe we'll just carry on a little further. So I let all the traffic go past that had obviously uh, queued up behind us, a bit like a tractor, um, and set off. Not a good idea. There was a slight incline and Buddy just wasn't having any of it. So I'd switch the hazards on and find somewhere to pull in. So this is how we ended up in the Coniston um, Hotel and Spa Resort, all very posh. But we weren't going for lunch or anything. We had to sit there and wait for recovery. And from there on in, things went downhill. So here we are at Coniston Cold Hotel, but we're not going for a meal. Oh no, we have something else in mind. Unfortunately, Buddy has broken down. The repair guy can't fix it on site, so we're going to have to wait an hour and a half for a tow truck. But hey ho! <sighs> So Kyle gets on the phone to order a recovery truck. This was going to be a horrible journey that would take over two and a half hours back home to the garage in Egremont. And while all this was going on, being loaded onto the back of the trailer, our poor Blue was sitting in the back of the car. I hate travelling in Buddy at the best of times, but this was to prove to be a nightmare journey for him. There was nothing we could do. There's a policy in these recovery trucks that they won't take dogs in the cab due to the fact that the next person getting in might be allergic. Seems nuts to me. He could have wrapped him in a blanket and put him in the foot well, you wouldn't have even known he was there. And instead of that, he had to suffer this bloody awful two and a half hour journey. Oh, Blue. It might be sick. Yeah, we're worried about Blue. So two and a half hours later we reached the garage in Egremont, the town nearest to us at home, and Michael here dropped us off in the yard. This morning's view. We've stayed in some strange places, but this has got to be the strangest. waiting for the garage to open so we can get Buddy booked in. It was a quiet night until about half past three and the traffic started again. Well, Blue's finally settled down. And he doesn't like being in the van the best of times and he certainly wouldn't have liked it with us not being there. Got a little bit shaky last night and just wanted to get out but he soon settled and this morning he's catching up on those Zeds. So apologies for this shorter than what we expected video. We were going to be stopping in Ingleton and doing a walk from Clapham actually up to the caves. We haven't been up there since I think Bernie was 15 and I was 13. So uh, we'll have to save that one till next time. But thanks for watching and please catch up with us again. Like and subscribe and we'll see you later.